look amazing, my friend. It's always great seeing you. I know the last time we talked, we talked about a new summer single. We talked about uh, some important shows that were coming up. And we were talking about something else that we're talking about today, which is a big congratulations, man. Finally, the Tea Party. New EP, new music, brother. This, uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming. So <laughs> it's been difficult with COVID, but, uh, you know, some of this music was started beforehand. So uh, we got lucky that way. We dodged a bullet because we were able to record a lot of this stuff in October 2019. And it was just down to finishing it that took us a little longer than expected. But uh, yeah, today is a big day. Hole in My Heart is the, the first thing you're, you're getting to hear today, you know, off the new EP coming soon. I love it, man. Look, we're going to get to that in a second, but I want to go back to the summertime because, like I said, you guys released a single in the summer and you had some good shows. Can you talk about that, please? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the shows got postponed. We had an amazing tour lined up and uh, just it got rescheduled three times. And then just with the latest wave, it was like, okay, time to think of something else. We can't keep postponing this and rescheduling and reissuing tickets. So um, we've put that off. And that was a tour kind of like a an edge fest of the 90s bands, you know, a smaller scale one, but uh, we were going to hit some small arenas across Canada with that. And tickets were selling really well. We're at like 65% sold. So it was a real shame to see uh, us pull up, you know, the sticks on that one and just leave. So, um, but, um, you know, when the time is right, we'll get Jeff over from Australia and, you know, we'll hit, we'll hit the road again. And obviously Canada will be the first place that we'll be hitting. So, But the good thing was you guys did have a single release during, uh, during the warm weather. Yeah, the uh, last one was Summertime, came out in the summer. Um, this latest one, I'm, I'm maybe a little more excited about. It's got more of our, our rock sound that we're famous for, and uh, it features a great friend of ours, Todd Kearns, um, who we were almost going to form a new band with, <laughs> actually, in 2005. But um, And this was actually one of the songs we were roughly hashing out at the time, so it felt right to get uh, Todd back in on this song. So we've had this song in our catalog since maybe 2003, and we just kept coming back to it. It's like, no, not ready yet, not ready yet. But we felt the time was right now. So I want to get to that song in just a second. But one thing I want to throw out, like, you know, Our Lady Peace has just opened up at the Elmo Combo uh, here in Toronto. Oh. And it's something that you and I kind of talked about before because I felt like during the pandemic, I needed to go back to the Tea Party, Our Lady Peace, um, music from the 90s, the 80s, uh, and I wasn't the only one doing that. I, I talked to a lot of people and they felt like they were doing the same thing. And again, not putting down music of today, but for, I guess, somebody in my generation, is it, do you feel like it's a comfort thing because we're going through such a tough time? Um, I know for myself, I felt like to find that joy again and remembering it was going through and remembering the music that you guys put out and so many other great groups from from my generation. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a few reasons there. I mean, obviously, there's comfort from recalling our youth <laughs> a little bit <laughs> and just the memories associated with that. And that's kind of what the prior single Summertime tapped into, you know, just that feeling of, you know, carefreeness in the summertime. But um, I think also, you know, there's so many changes in the world and on the music front, too. And, you know, you were defined by what music you listen to. So it's interesting to go back into your own history and see, rediscover why you liked certain music. So, but it, it is amazing how an old song can put you in a good mood. So when, when the tea party decided, you know, even though it was a couple of years and they were going, okay, we got to get some new music out here. We got to get, uh, you know, the guys back together and, you know, hopefully tour and things like that. Was there ever any thought of, okay, because we are entering, even though we are going to take, the generation that has followed us over the years, you're going to be introduced in some ways to a new generation. Was there ever any thought in that introduction and also competing with bands that are out today? Um, yeah, I mean, we were starting to see that in the concerts where there'd be a front row of a father and his son or daughter. And even backstage, you know, I uh, would meet, you know, uh, I remember meeting a few uh, female guitar players that were like 16 or 17 and they were playing grunge music and uh you know we were one of their not that we were necessarily grunge but you know we were one of the guitar bands that they listened to while they were trying to form their bands and their fathers had been you know fans of the band so it was kind of you know bringing it full circle so um <clears throat> uh as i mean sound nowadays is so diverse and <clears throat> it might appear to the public that 
you know, rock doesn't exist anymore, you know, based on, you know, if you just watch TMZ or, you know, if you watched maybe, I don't want to throw any Canadian shows under the bus, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just, uh, it doesn't get a, a mind share that it once did. I'll agree with that hundred percent, but there's, because it's gone underground again, it can be a little more authentic and the people that like it, love it. So, um, it's an interesting thing that's going on there. And, you know, every single year people are discovering Led Zeppelin and, we're one of the bands when we came out we got compared to the blood stuff and and you know people thought it was a, a put down or you know disrespectful comment but you know we didn't mind at all i mean getting compared to one of the greatest rock bands of all time that was an honor of ours and to be included in the same sentence and um yeah so as people discover the older bands you know we're, we're starting to get grouped in you know, we're still not played on classic rock, though, which is interesting. <laughs> you know, it's so weird, even when you hear that word classic rock, because still for me, classic rock is from, you know, the 60s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think of the Tea it's Party. Evolve, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I guess in a lot of ways, you know, that's the way it is, though. But at the same time, though, just because you're considered classic rock doesn't mean you can't release new music and that's what we're into now you kind of mentioned it before but i'm going to circle back around again what is the name of the new ep and how does it represent the band and also you kind of mentioned it before but i'm gonna go back again what is the latest single that's released too um so we re released uh, an ep in 2019 called black river and this is the follow-up to that it's called sun shower and it's coming out in a few weeks in canada australia uh, the usa uh, in Europe and the rest of the world, though, they decided to combine the two EPs into one LP. They liked still the album format, and we appreciate it because we kind of had it in the back of our mind to create a couple of EPs, you know, to, in order to to amalgamate them to make a, rock, a record. So that's called Blood Moon Rising, uh, a song that's a tribute to our, our sound man that passed away, a sound man of 20 years, John Watt. Um, but uh, the first single off the new EP, Sun Shower, is uh, Hole in My Heart. And uh, it's a great rock song. It's uh, not too long, straight to the point. It's got a good riff. And uh, Todd Kearns, our friend from Age of Electric, and he plays bass with Slash's band. Um, he lent his vocals just to get to those high registers for us. <laughs> oh, man. What was it like recording this? Um, it was a multi-stage thing, this thing. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, the sound you hear now was recorded mainly in Vancouver in 2019 at the Armories. Uh, the Armory Studios, which is, uh, I think, Bruce Fairbain's family now runs it as a trust. But uh, some great rock records were recorded there. And we're very honored in Vancouver, or lucky, I should say, to have such great recording studios still. You know, so many have been plowed down and turned into condos. But, you know, Brian Adams Studio, the warehouse is still there. And yep. you know, Little Mountain Sound is still there in one way or another. But uh, so we cut all the bass tracks there, uh, uh, the bad tracks, I should say, the drums, the bass, the beginnings of the guitar parts. And then Jeff Martin took everything back to uh, Australia and finished things at his uh, studio there. So, uh, yeah. So what are the thoughts then? You kind of mentioned that because of what happened with the tour having to be dismantled, what are the thoughts for 2022? Are we going to wait to see how things go? Because, you know, like I said, in Toronto, venues are opening up. Their shows are happening. Like mm -hmm. now when I'm looking at social media, I'm seeing people – at venues and audiences and they're enjoying the bands yeah um well, it's funny i mean we're gonna hit canada as soon as possible but there's already discussion in australia for us to do something at the opera house with an orchestra which is funny this started with uh, a canadian tour in 2002 across canada where we played with eight orchestras across the country and australians were like oh we need to hear this too mate <laughs> so uh, uh we did it twice and we had a really amazing couple of shows there ending with the melbourne symphony orchestra you know 2700 rock fans cheering the orchestra on so <laughs> some of the older players were like keep it down <laughs> but uh so there's talks about putting something together like that and um, i hope it comes through because it'll inspire us to return to canada and be able to do that again because a lot of our songs, uh, they have such deep orchestrations and, you know, deep overdubs and, you know, spreading it out on an arrangement over the orchestra is just, you know, it's already scored, so we're ready to go. But um, it just lends itself like to hear, you know, an epic song like Sister Awake with all its parts all played out by, you know, the intricacies of the orchestra. It's, it's a blast to play it live and the audience loves it. So it's my dream, actually. Uh, uh, maybe Roy Thompson Hall or something like that, uh, an appropriate setting in Toronto that we could return to maybe for like, you know, Christmas 2022 or something and 
Um, unfortunately, Dean Cameron, our former EMI Records Chairman um, of Canada, uh, he passed away, but he was running the venues and we were beginning to talk to him about this idea. Um, it's very expensive to do these shows. So, you know, uh, I think a show in Toronto is a possibility due to, you know, maybe corporate sponsorship or something to keep the tickets under $150, you know. <laughs> so we don't want people paying too much to see us. And, uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that everyone in the orchestra is compensated for us. So it's, it's a difficult situation to solve. I'm hoping it does happen because one of the things I always loved about the band's music is the fact that um, it takes a lot to break down a tea party song because there are so many elements involved it's just not like a beat a guitar rift and a couple of words it literally it's funny now that i'm really thinking about it when and agree or disagree when a tea party song is written it's almost like a classical orchestrated song because there are so many elements that are involved and put together and it's it really is riding a wave of music mm -hmm. actually i miss that's the one thing i missed because of covid is just being in the studio for so many hours like when we lived in montreal together it, we put so many hours into edges of twilight and transmission and just you know you'd come up with an idea at dinner and then you'd go back and you'd feed off each other and you know before you know it, it's four in the morning you kind of turn it off because your ears are bleeding but uh, <laughs> you just get so many ideas and you know like it's when you're re-listening to demos and as the song progresses that you figure out all these uh, spaces where an overdub would make sense so um yeah i mean in saying that though some of our songs are simple folk songs too so there's a, a it runs the whole gamut but uh i mean we've never shied away from those ethics though so <laughs> Just curious too, is there new merch out now? There, yeah, we've got some great uh, artwork for the, the EP and the single and stuff like that. So uh, there'll be t-shirts, I'm sure, following in that design. So yeah. Okay, fantastic. As we're rolling into 2022, of course, we're going into the holiday season. What are the plans for you, man? Um, well, I just released uh, a soundtrack to Darkest Dungeon 2, and it's doing really well, but uh, the game is in a, an early access, so that soundtrack will evolve over the coming years. So I still have a few pieces to write for that. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, just wait and see what happens with the Tea Party, you know. Um, I also have another ambient folk record that I've been working on for like 10 years, and it has Glenn Campbell and Mavis Staples. It's called Uncommon Folk. So wow. I'm hoping that more songs uh, from that record can come out because they're ready to go. So it's just a case of like the business side and arranging all that. So Fantastic. And just before, again, before we go to, I always have to ask this right at the top, celebrate Christmas, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got two kids, so. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. So I was going to ask, uh, what's going on with the family? And also, what would you say growing up was your favorite Christmas gift? <clears throat> Actually, yeah, I'm English, so um, just a complete surprise. We were in England, and my parents bought me uh, what's called Sabudio. It's a little soccer game where you, you flick the players with your finger. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, I know that. But, uh, you know, it was the 70s, so it was like a big deal. And actually, when I got home, I built up my own stadium for the field <laughs> and everything. I really got into it. So. I mean, if it was nowadays, you know, I would have had my YouTube on a steady cam going in there and flying and making stop motion or something. But <laughs> so. Oh, my goodness. I love I love hearing that stuff, man. Um, you know, and again, going into 2022, you know, people have talked about, if you remember, when we were going into from 2019 to 2020, people were just like, oh, let's get to 2020. I hate 2019. And then we did 2020 and they were like, oh, my God, can we get to 2021? Now we're going into 2022 and people seem to be already revving up for that. What advice can you give that you've gone through as we've dealt with the last couple of years? Because a lot of people are thinking, yeah, 2022, the world's going to change. And it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, live concerts that are general admission, you know, they're probably like the last thing that's going to open up in Canada. So, uh um, I mean, if we continue to, to stay safe and, you know, mask and wash our hands, then hopefully, you know, the numbers can go down to a point where we can, you know, uh, start filling up some venues again. So, Fantastic. My brother, thank you so much for the interview. You said hello to the guys for me. Yeah, get Jeff back over here for like, a, you know, for at least a short time. I'd love to catch up with him, man. Is he still doing the little tiny mustache? I think so. <laughs> That's yeah, a true that'll... <laughs> Big time. Yeah. 
<laughs> Look, man, all the best to you and the family over the holidays. Looking forward to seeing you guys in person at some point in time. And hopefully you guys are going to be back in Toronto performing because I will be in that audience for that. I cannot wait. All the best to you. All right. Take care.